are you happy now? <laughs> okay. Back to this. So we are talking about, well, we had our garden hose and we were talking about flow versus pressure. And let's see, where did I leave off of here? Um, I don't remember. Oh, as the restriction is removed, the pressure will go down. All right, that's where I left off. So then we talked about the operation, the operation of the pump. There we go. Or operation. Operation. And this is how the pump operates. All right. So it utilizes an eccentric, eccentric rotor driven inside of a cylinder. Slots in the rotor, the rotor, allow the veins to slide in and out. Allow the veins to slide in and out. Let's see. So as the veins rotate, as the veins rotate, the volume in the cylinder increases and decreases. The volume in the cylinder increases and decreases and decreases. Uh, the large space is the pump inlet. So the large space is the pump inlet. First, I'm talking about the large space, which is right here, larger space here, and the smaller space then becomes the pump outlet. Of course, this one kind of puts the larger space down here, but definitely this is not the inlet. So it's got to suck it through. And of course, these are the veins and they slide in and out right there. Uh, smaller space is the pump outlet. All right, constant displacement for, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, this was B. I don't know how I got four out of that, that was B. C, nobody said anything. Minus one to 10 of point for everybody. I was going to, but I went to Ivy instead of four. <laughs> All right, constant displacement. Constant displacement fuel pumps are designed to deliver more fuel than they need. Constant displacement pumps are designed oops, are designed to deliver more fuel than needed. I'm sure you can hear my dogs are going ape s tonight. I don't know why. Yes, we can. <laughs> All excess fuel. Actually, I know why, because Zeus is normally sitting in here with me, and now he's out there tonight, and he's irritating everybody else. Uh, All excess fuel is pumped. Pumped where? Back to the uh, inlet. There you go. Thank you. Back to the inlet side of the pump. All 
All right, so I'm putting note here, note. On this particular pump, the inlet side of the pump is literally the inlet side of the pump. But you're gonna see that a lot of times, in some, or not, in some cases they will say the inlet, inlet side of the pump maybe, maybe back to the fuel tank. So sometimes they'll say that. Uh, there's a little video, if you guys haven't watched it yet, it, it, it talks about the next type of pump. They do say that quite a few times. Then it goes back to the inlet side of the pump. Like, well, it does, but via the fuel tank. So that is something to actually note. Okay, a pressure relief valve, a pressure relief valve. Pressure relief valve adjusts the amount of fuel being returned and thus outlet pressure. So the a pressure relief valve adjusts the amount, amount of fuel being returned, uh, fuel being returned. You're typing so fast. I'm not typing at all. I meant writing so fast. Oh, okay. And thus, <laughs> the outlet pressure. the outlet pressure. Sorry, because I already talked about all this and I'm just filling it in. So if you would have wrote it down when I was talking about the first time, then I wouldn't have this problem. All right, so uh, pressure relief valve. How do we adjust that pressure relief valve? Uh, there's a, usually a little cap or a lock ring on top. You loosen up the lock ring or take off the cap and then there's just a screw. And it is just like you think it would be if you want more pressure, you screw it to the right. If you want less pressure, you unscrew it. Uh, it actually has left-hand threads in there, and you guys will see that when you finally get to the lab, um, but it doesn't change anything. It's still right is more, left is less. All right, letter F. Uh, let's see, all engine driven pumps must have a mechanism to allow boost pump fuel to flow through the pump. That's called the bypass. That is for starting and in the event of an engine driven pump failure. So I'm going to write that. So all, <laughs> Kevin, are you charged for those notes, Kevin? No, I do not, but it's just, you know, kind of hard. Oh. Uh, well, I could sell my notes because I actually have all this typed up. I mean, just... <laughs> like I got a scanner right there. I should just scan it, just post it, and then just, you know, give you 30 seconds to write it all down. <laughs> all right. F, all engine driven, all engine, engine driven uh, pumps. And by all, I mean all. All engine driven pumps must, they must have a mechanism, a mechanism to allow boost pump, to allow the boost pump, allow the boost pump fuel to flow through, through the pump. That's the engine driven pump, the one we're talking about. We'll call that bypass. So I'm saying the engine driven pump must have a mechanism to allow the boost pump fuel to flow through the pump, which is called bypass. And we do that for starting because if the engine's not running, then the boost pump or the, uh, the engine driven pump is actually holding still and blocking fuel. So it's got to get around those veins somehow. And in the event, and in the event of engine driven pump failure, in the event of engine driven pump failure. Am I doing better now, Janet? I'm almost, I'm on F, so you could scroll up if you need to. Good. Hey, Kevin, I got a question. 
Yes. So like on your 150 or Harry's 182, do they have fuel filters? Yes, absolutely. So uh, each one of those aircraft have almost the same design. Uh, you start at the, the fuel tank and there's that finger strainer that has never changed and it's quite large spaces. Uh, so it's just, it's really made to filter out big pieces of something. Um, nickels and dimes and washers and nuts and bolts. Then it goes down to something called a gascalator, and that's at the lowest point of the entire fuel system. It goes all the way to the bottom of the aircraft. Let me see, I got some pictures over here. I wonder if this one shows it. No. Um, yeah, well, let's go with this. So, like this airplane here. The gas escalator is right down here where my cursor is, way, way down there. It's usually almost sticking out the bottom. This one would be right about here. I don't see it on this plane, but that's called the gas escalator. And you can actually drain water. And they're usually made of, a lot of times they're made of glass. So you can see inside of them and tell if there's any debris. So it goes down into the gas escalator, which we do drain every morning before we fly. And then it goes up to the carburetor or fuel system or whatever, but the carburetor has that screen in it. So every annual, I'm going to take apart the gas escalator and I'm going to uh, inspect this. The, it's just a screen, uh, but it's a pretty fine mesh screen. And it also has a bowl that collects water. So I'm going to take that apart and inspect that. And then I'm going to take off the inlet, the hose, inlet fuel hose to the carburetor and pull the screen out of that. Okay. All right, you caught up, Janet? Yes. All yes. right. All right. Then let's talk about something new. A compensated fuel pump. All right, so a compensated fuel pump is one that is paid for its work. Now, it compensates for altitude, that's the name. So. Really, if we were to, if we were to look at it, uh, I hope you are, in looking at this, this fuel pump right here, it is actually almost exactly identical to the one before it. I'll just bring it up. There it is. So this one, and we can identify everything on this one. We've got the actual pump. We've got the bypass plate. And this part right here is the pressure relief. So it's either gonna bypass or pressure relief go, we have the pressure relief spring, everything looks about the same. So looking back here, we got the, the, the bypass right here. We got the pressure relief, uh, the pump. The only thing that's different is we've added, this is a diaphragm, a rubber diaphragm. And that's how they're always gonna show diaphragms in any kind of drawing with this little loop here, which indicates that this has the uh, slack in it so it can raise and it can lower. So what that does is we can take and vent this. And this one says vent connected to fuel metering device, inlet air pressure. You can do it to, well, we'll start with just atmosphere. So we could actually vent this to atmosphere. And so what happens as I'm down low in the ground, um, down low altitude, atmospheric pressure comes through here and it pushes down on this diaphragm and it assists let me get a pen. It's pushing down. And it's so it assists the spring. It helps the spring. It makes the spring a little bit tighter than it used to be. So that is going to increase the outlet pressure. It's the same thing as putting your screwdriver in here and giving it a, giving it a half a turn or something. So it uh, increases the pressure. Now, when we go up in altitude, the opposite is going to happen. So we go up in altitude. And because it's vented to the atmosphere, then we have less pressure up here. So since there's less pressure, it, it assists the spring less is what I really should say. And because it's assisting the spring less, it's gonna let the outlet pressure drop. And the reason why you want something like that is that it just makes it easier on the whole system because as you go up in altitude, obviously your fuel control unit needs less fuel. So give it less pressure. Less pressure means um, usually less fuel. But let's take this one step further. So you're thinking, well, 
I mean, yeah, that, that seems like an awful lot of something to go through just for that little bit. And you, you would be right because just the difference in altitude is really not a whole lot on there. But now let's get ahead of ourselves just a little bit and let's take this thing and we're going to go to, um, this is connect vent connecting to fuel metering device inlet air pressure. Well, that's another way of saying upper deck pressure. Upper deck pressure. And upper deck pressure is the same thing as saying turbo uh, boost pressure or boost pressure. So when we're going to start talking about stuff like this and turbochargers, um, we have the whole system. So we're going to have our butterfly valve, right? And we had a Venturi if we do. So we'll have that. And then it's going to go um, to the turbocharger. I don't know how to draw a turbo. Here's my compressor. That really sucked. So a compressor wheel, which is a, a form of a compressor. And then it's going to go off to the, we'll just say engine. Off to the engine. So, pick another color. So everything from here to here is going to be manifold. Actually, I could say all the way back here, all the way to the inlet. All that's going to be the manifold. And everything from here to here is going to be called upper deck. Upper deck pressure. So on a carbureted turbo engine, the fuel and air go through the cold side of the turbo? Yep. Uh, mm, not really. Yes and no. Most of them are um, fuel injected. And so the fuel injection happens right here. Okay, that, that makes more sense. That's why I was asking. Yeah. But uh, if we go back to, um, you know, like that gigantic, was that an R6800? I should, I should know this. The, the big radial we have in the, the lab that's uh, sitting uh, with, up on end. Yeah, the one you can plug in. Yep. That one goes through a pressure carb and the pressure carb goes then into the impeller. Interesting. So when you have a, a pressure, um, when, you, when you're using a pressure carb, yeah, then it goes in there. So on a, on a system like this, it's actually plumbed off of here. And this is uh, two cabin, two cabin pressure. So you're actually using this for pressurization of the cabin if it's fuel injected. If it's a pressure carb, that's a really bad idea. Uh, you really, that's, you can't smoke if you're going to do that because that would be, um, explosive It's a bummer. Yeah, I know, I know. All right, so now let's take this idea right here. And so what we're doing is, is we're taking this and well, I'll just bring it right over to here. All right, and, and the reason why you want to do that uh, is uh, really a couple reasons. One, this kind of assists in controlling the fuel pressure going in, well, it doesn't kind of, it actually it controls the fuel pressure. Um, so as the engine speeds up, so I want to speed up the engine, the fuel control unit way downstream is trying to deliver the proper amount of fuel for the proper amount of pressure that's happening after the turbochargers. So the two have to kind of talk to each other. And this is one way to do it. So I open this throttle up and that is going to let air flow through to the engine immediately. But it takes a while for this uh, turbocharger to actually spool up. So this is just one nice way of sensing that. So this can sense it and go, well, wait a minute, I'm not going to put a whole bunch of pressure down on this just yet. Just because you opened up the throttle and just because you sped up the engine, that doesn't mean you're ready for a whole bunch of fuel. You got a ways to go here, pal. So it's going to wait until the turbo spools up and then it's going to sense this pressure here and that pressure is going to come in and go, okay, now we're going to push down on this and we're going to start and then we're going to up the pressure. So this helps with turbo lag, if you will. That makes sense. I'm glad because it was supposed to. So, all right. So that's, that's what the compensated fuel pump is all about. So ties in really well with the turbocharger or supercharger. 
what else can I tell you? Now the dangers of course with this are you could get a blockage. So you could get it coming from the turbocharger and you could get a lot of pressure coming in here. And then for whatever reason, a little ladybug comes in there and blocks that off. And then you decrease the turbocharger, you decrease upper deck pressure, and this doesn't know it. It's still pushing down on here like crazy, going, come on, give us some more fuel. And what do you think is going to happen then? Too rich. Yeah, it's going to run rich. So um, let me see. Oh, Heath asked, uh, is there a standard pressure set for all based on engine size, pressure set? You know, actually kind of yes, more or less. Um, it, it is. It's a range. And just off the top of my head, it's around 9 to 15 PSI for most of the aircraft stuff. Uh, if Yeah, that's all going to go with that for right now. Um, I think the really big carburetors are going to want a little more than that, though. But you're, you're going to see how they work. You think, well, that makes sense. 9 to 15 ought to work across the board. So, all right. Um, same thing is true. Uh, of course, it could get plugged going the other way. These are really good oral questions that I like to ask. I could say, well, we go way up in altitude and uh, it's just vented atmosphere. So we're up there at 20 some thousand feet. And uh, then I get a little bug that, that goes in there and, and plugs that up. And um, if it plugs it up up at 20,000 feet and I come all the way down and now I'm, I'm uh, down at sea level, is the pump going to be putting out the proper amount of pressure too much or too little? Too little? Yeah, because now we've got a low pressure in here that's kind of wanting to push up on this, and that is going to allow it to bypass a little easier, so that would decrease your fuel pressure when you didn't want it to decrease. If you came from like a very high altitude down to sea level and it was plugged, could that cause your engine to... No, never mind. I know where you're going with that, um, but then I have to take it to the next step and say you're really not going to go over, I'm just going to throw out a number like 15 to 20,000 feet if you're not turbocharged. So it just, it just doesn't work out that way. You're going to be down much lower anyway. So that kind of makes the question kind of not work. Cause I thought the same thing. Oh, should I go through that scenario? I was like, nah, that doesn't work. It's just not going to happen unless it's turbocharged. What's next? Well, okay. Well, that's the next slide for that. Okay, so we're going to write this one. I'll just write it real fast. Um, just kidding. Okay, some pumps are compensated. Some pumps are compensated. Um, or another word for that, or balanced. Or balanced. So atmospheric pressure atmospheric and looks like atmosphere eric um, uh, pressure pressure uh, or upper deck pressure that's two different things atmospheric pressure or we could use upper deck pressure or upper deck pressure is connected is connected to a vent chamber on the pump a vent chamber on the pump on the pump as pressure decreases that is we go up in altitude As pressure decreases, which is to say altitude increases, or less pressure in the upper deck, um, there is there is less pressure. There is less pressure on the diaphragm. Less pressure on the diaphragm, allowing more fuel to flow through the pressure relief. Allowing more fuel 
to flow through the pressure relief. And then the opposite, as pressure increases, I should say as, as air pressure increases, upper, air deck, upper, upper deck pressure or atmospheric, as air pressure increases, more pressure is placed on the diaphragm. Diaphragm aiding, aiding the spring, aiding the spring, um, the pressure relief spring that is, and increasing pump outlet pressure, and increasing pump outlet pressure. Now I've only got two minutes. I'm gonna come back to this slide and I'll leave it on, so don't, don't freak out on me. But uh, I want to show you something that is kind of cool um, about this. So you are actually going to get the opportunity to, oh, sorry, I did that. You're going to get the opportunity to, uh, as a group of two, to get one of these pumps that, that is compensated. And you're going to disassemble, and you're going to do the whole oral on it. And you're going to put it together, and you're going to put it on a test stand, and that's the, the greenish test stand that sits right next to our door as you walk into the lab right there on the left. And so you're gonna put it on the test stand and you're gonna have directions to run it at a certain RPM and you're gonna set up an orifice and a certain amount of flow based on a certain amount of pressure. So I wanna give you a preview of this and just ask you and show you what, what that's gonna look like. So you're gonna have this all set up and you're gonna have this pump running at a certain RPM with a certain restriction. It's got a little valve on it so you can change the restriction. So you have a certain restriction. And I don't remember what the numbers are, but let's say it's 25 PSI and let's say it's five gallons per minute. I'm just gonna make up some stuff. And so you have it there and you have it running. And uh, I'm gonna ask you a question. I'm gonna say something like, well, okay, so I have a big, I have a big syringe um, that I'm gonna hook onto here. So I have a little piece of tubing and then I hook my syringe onto here and uh, my syringe and I, and I pull it back and I'm going to put a vacuum on this. And I'm going to ask you what's going to happen to these two numbers. And you should be able to figure that out. And I would hope that you could even look at it right now. What is going to happen when I pull back on that syringe? Anybody care to venture to guess? Or did everybody leave? Get less PSI out of the output. Okay, so if I pull back on the syringe, I'm going to literally create a vacuum up here, which is going to suck this diaphragm up. I'm going to physically force it up is what I'm going to do. And so that is going to open up this bypass, and it's going to start letting fuel bypass. Now, if fuel is bypassing around here, that means that the pressure is going to go decrease. Decrease. Down. All right. My gallons per minute is actually measured over, over here. A little wheel right there it's measuring how much fuel is going through so that's decreased too right that's that good. is also going to decrease because the fuel instead of going this way is going to go that way so okay. i go never mind i'm going that way okay now i'm going to turn it around and i'm going to do the opposite i'm going to take my syringe and i'm going to pull it out and then i'm going to plug it back in and i'm going to push on this really hard so now i'm going to force this diaphragm down what is that going to do to my pressure and gallons per minute? Raise them. Higher pressure, higher GPM. All right. So I'm going to put more pressure. So my pressure gauge is right here, by the way, PSI. Pressure. So more pressure. Why? Because I've shut this down. And so the fuel is now, instead of going, it, it's got to it's go this way. It has no choice but to go that way. And it's going to back up against this. Um, all this fuel wants to go here, and it can't. So that means the pressure is gonna go up. Um, and because the pressure goes up and I'm still trying to force fuel somewhere, that means that the gallons per minute must also go up. 
So there we go. And I promised you I'd go back to this for those of you that need to get caught up. And I think that's it for tonight, isn't it? Yes, yes. yes that is. That is. Yes. All right. That also kind of went back to my question I had earlier. So it kind of worked out nice how you did that. Okay. Well, good. As also, and uh, always, uh, you know, thanks for the knowledge. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. And as always, hey, guys. Thank you. Don't go away mad. Just go away. Go away. Just go away. Actually, uh, now I don't care if you go away. I leave this open all night if it made you happy. But you well, don't want to join it at any time. You, you don't want to. You don't want to see me walk down here in the morning with my hair sticking straight up. And so, all right. So tomorrow, oh, I'll stop the recording because we don't need to record all this. Stop recording.